yeah, it does boil down to don't panic about the risk five because you weren't going to get risk five in the first place. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, ambulances, you never know. Yeah. Many things <laughs> take place. Uh, yeah, we've been playing around in the pre-show, just kind of watching because something I've set up, I don't know if we've talked about it on this show, but we are uh, Twitch affiliates and they changed, they altered the deal for us a little while back. And they're like, hey, you can stream on other platforms. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Because we used to stream on uh, YouTube as well. I'm like, okay. So maybe, maybe that's something we need to explore. And I'm like, sure, this has been years and years ago that we used to do multi streams. I'm like, hey, what does it cost? There's got to be a service, right? I'm like, to do yeah. some multi stream. I was like, I just want to mm -hmm. replicate the feed, should be easy enough. I, I head over to restream.com. You know, for nothing, as long as we can put our branding on, I'm like, I don't want that. I'm like, well, how about standard? No branding. Like, Give us $19 a month. That's down here in the mice type when build monthly. I'm like, that, that seems kind of high. Seems kind of high. So I spent all of um, 45 minutes on a $5 nanode from Linode. That's not a commercial for Linode, by the way. <laughs> and hacked together um, a restream solution for YouTube. Twitch and Facebook because Facebook required a uh, RTMP S and it didn't do it out of the box. So I wanted to see if I could make that work. And apparently it is working. And we tried it out Saturday and everything like worked. We didn't have any like crashes and it seems like it's working right now. We just had a pre-show. We got YouTube chat up. I don't, I have no idea how to even get to the Facebook live stream. So if you're watching on Facebook, hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you go to the live video tab. I don't know where that is. <laughs> no idea. No idea. I'd be like, no, we're going to take your computers away unless you can find them. Like, just take them. But I saw that you were excited about a puzzle platforming game that's got a sequel where you can run around and play with boxes and fans and uh, yes. lasers. Absolutely. So one of my favorite first person puzzler games of all time has a sequel. And I talked about this a few weeks ago. I've been loving playing Talos Principle 2 that came out last Thursday no, on November 2nd. And I would played a dem the demo a month ago and now get to play the full game. Woohoo! It actually has a really great story, which answers a lot of questions from the original Talos Principle game. But you're not going to get any spoilers from me because <laughs> you need to play it. It's, it's, if you played the original, you've got to play this sequel. And... You also get to use classic game mechanics you know and love from the original, as well as new, you know, awesome puzzle mechanics with uh, traversing around huge maps. It's, it's really amazing. The size of the maps for the sequel is, is just amazing. And yeah, it's got like a little he, hub in it instead yeah, of uh, just it does. linear progression. I've been watching a couple of people stream it. Yeah, mm. it does. And... What's interesting is this one, yeah, it's got all the puzzle platformer me mechanics, but it's got a, a, a got, a, it has a lot more cinematics and s story elements to it, telling you, you know, how, um, how you were created and how the, how your universe was created. And it answers a lot of those questions, but it also has a lot of explore exploration elements, not just puzzle platforming. Or, you know, first person puzzle. It's also exploration as well. And one of the things that's cool is De Devolver Digital made a Talus Principle 2 and Portal crossover promotional video with the original voice of GLaDOS, Ellen McLean. And uh, Gla it's called GLaDOS Plays the Talus Principle 2. And it's on YouTube. And go watch that. It is amazing. The Talos, uh, we've called it the Talos benchmark, the original one. Um, yes. Because even last night, Jordan got a new video card. And of course, was, I was just waiting around for the screenshot. And he's like, eh, and there's our Talos benchmark. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, you know, because it was uh, Devolver Di Digital with the Sirius engine, the Talos principle was uh, their first with, uh, to demonstrate Vulcan. So you remember those days, Vin, when we were testing, all, testing that out? <laughs> it was good um yeah like vulcan rolling out was a 
huge jump over OpenGL performance. Uh, yeah. I, I've watched a couple of people stream the uh, latest Talos principle and they'd get to a point with the puzzle. I'm like, yeah, that's where I'd quit. So it's. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is hard. You know, it is. The original Talos principle is actually harder than 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 Portal or Portal Two. It, it, the the mechanics at the end are mind bending, it, it, <laughs> but it's really awesome, and it's such a triumph, you know, when you get get <laughs> through the finish of it. So I'm probably about halfway through on Talos principle two, and just really loving it. <laughs> Every night I've been playing it. <laughs> good. It's good to have a game like that. What do we got up first? this week well we're gonna put the fox in a box that's as far as i can go with a rhyme because this is firefox <laughs> nightly debian packages for debian systems for systems that use debian i know ryan um because if you've been looking for an easy way to install firefox nightly and a snap no not that kind of snap no 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 just a regular good old-fashioned type of just a snap the good one you know what i'm talking about or if you're yeah. just on debian or one of the mini Debian babies, you want to call them. We can now have an official app repo. I mean, this is like five easy copy pasta steps. That's it. You're done. You're so good nice. to go. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay, this, this is simplifies it. It takes the thought process out of it. You do an app update, boom. Hey, we got a new version of Nightly. I don't have to mess around downloading anything. Now, what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see is take this a step further because my brothers and sisters, you might be familiar with downloading big, evil, nasty Chrome. But it comes in a Debian package and it just automatically does this for you. You know, it sets yeah. up everything in your app sources. You don't think about it. You know, you do what well, you do, what I do, because I still use dpackage because I'm horrible. But sometimes I remember to use apt install with a downloaded dev package. I'd like to see that little bit extra added on that. But this is still a fantastic way to get your nightlies. And you need to keep in mind that this is nightlies. So you don't get to put the TM symbol after it just works. There will be yeah. problems. There will be days where you will have, um, like running any, any other nightly build, there will be days where things just don't work. Well. So you don't want to rely on it as your primary browser. But if you want to see the latest and greatest and what's upcoming and be part of that experience, and you're on a Debian based system, Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, whatever other thing is based off Debian, uh, install it, set it up use it and participate in the process because what starts out nightly eventually works its way into stable. So awesome. This is such fantastic news. <laughs> and what's really cool is after the nightly dot debs are tested for a while, Mozilla will also make them available for all the releases, including the beta, the ESR release and the default stable downloads for Firefox. Woohoo. So all my years of using the tar.bz2 binary to install Firefox on my Debian Ubuntu installs is going to be a thing of the past. <laughs> Yay. Because I will be able to use the convenient dot devs. There'll be a link in the show notes. Don't worry about it. Like I said, five easy steps. There's not even a hard one at the end and you can get that set up and you can go play with yeah. the nightlies. Now, mm -hmm. Fedora 39 is out. It's real. And it's powered by Linux kernel 6.5. Yeah. So Yes, the Fedora Linux project has just released Fedora Linux 39. Fedora Linux 39 is the latest stable release, which, as Van says, features the Linux kernel 6.5. And the default flagship Fedora Workstation 39 now features the latest GNOME 45 desktop environment, which feature, has all kinds of cool features like a keyboard backlight, quick setting, and new activities, and camera indicator, and revamp settings, and Nautilus file manager apps. And what's really cool also is that the Fedora KDE desktop spin features KDE Plasma 5.27 LTS, the Cinnamon desktop spin features Cinnamon 5.8, and the Budgie desktop spin features Budgie 10.8. And some of the, the apps that were updated include the latest LibreOffice 7.6, and Mozilla Firefox web browser 119. And it also includes the latest Mesa 23.2.1 graphics sta stack for those of us that like to game on Linux. <laughs> so that's, that's good news indeed. And, you know, the, the default Fedora workstation has been the poster child 
for the default GNOME desktop. And this one is no exception. It, it shows off uh, GNOME 45 in all its beauty. We got new spins. Fedora's <laughs> come a long way. Oh, it, it has. sure has. Like it's actually changed as what you would expect from it, uh, the original billing, because let me take a trip back to that. Yeah. Long, long ago. <laughs> because Monday was kind of an interesting day. November 6th. But we need to talk about November 6, 2003, because that was 20 yeah. years ago. That was the first release of this thing called Fedora Core. Fedora Core. One. Right? <laughs> yes. The first couple of releases, they were like, hey, man, what core are you on? I'm like, I'm a core one. I'm a core three. I'm a core. Six. Yes. I remember <laughs> downloading and installing this, like making it a thing because I had just got my hands on this new moon technology from AMD, which was the CPU. That supported x86 and x86-64. I was mm. like, I can install a 64-bit version of Linux, and I did, and none of my media codecs worked, and it was pretty bad. We've kind of forgotten about that transition from moving to 32-bit uh, to 64-bit on the desktop. It was kind of rough, but this is so good to see. And back in those days, um, and rightfully so, Fedora held on to that bleeding edge kind of expect everything to mostly work but it was a great way to stay up to date but don't complain when something you know just got knackered completely mm -hmm. things are a lot I, i'm gonna say by fedora 24 it was more of a something that i'd feel comfortable saying yeah you just put fedora on your, your daily drive and you're good yeah just, you're not gonna run yeah. into any problems and even more so in modern times you know we're at 39 you're like yeah fedora is more of just the distribution. It's still reasonably up to date, but it's more of a distribution that you can just put in, use a daily driver. You don't have to worry about it because, like, you know, the true Linux loving miscreants and psychopaths are running, you know, Arch and, you know, there's still the Gen 2 people out there laughing at all of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, a little <laughs> slice of ARM. That's right. ARM has gobbled the Raspberry Pi up. Nom, nom, nom. But it's nom, not nom, nom. bad. <laughs> not bad at all yeah. this comes from tom's hardware what has actually happened i just wanted to go ahead and give you like what's going down here arm made a strategic investment in the raspberry pi limited which is part of the raspberry pi foundation that's their business side now there's no details on how much money they gave them you know how much they invested which i'm like all right fair enough but i don't want everybody to panic about this because i've seen a bunch of omg let's panic everything's on fire why because they're saying hey man uh, we're not going to get Risk Five CPUs. To remind everyone, Raspberry Pi is a member of the Risk Five Foundation. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean we're getting Risk Five yeah. CPUs, but <laughs> I, I wouldn't completely rule it out. Um, so saying that, you know, ARM is doing this to prevent future adoption or at least immediate adoption of Risk Five based solutions. Well, you're probably not wrong, but I don't think you were going to get that in the first place. Because uh, Raspberry Pi is heavily entrenched with Broadcom and ARM and their ecosystem. Yeah. Nothing bad oh. could ever come from this, right? No, I, I think this is a good thing. You know, the Raspberry Pi Pi 5 <laughs> that was just released uh, it uses actually silicon uh, designed in-house by the Raspberry Pi company, which is a first. And I'm sure this will mean that the in-house design silicon via the RPI IO controller, which is right here. <laughs> I can't, I can't even read it because I, I, I would need a uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm sure that this will make uh, cement uh, that chip being made in the ARM family in the foreseeable future. I mean, this just, makes sense right <laughs> so and here's what i kid, want here's what i know. want <laughs> give me a 250 300 raspberry pi that can trade blows with whatever apple's making right now yeah yeah <laughs> I absolutely mean, <laughs> but you know arm arm is the uh, designers and ip holders and you know they license that out and other people build the tech out knowledge on it. so i don't want everyone to think that all of a sudden like overnight they're gonna, you're, we're gonna start getting like M class series. Um, they're yeah. probably gonna stick with a Broadcom for the foreseeable future. 
But um, yeah, it does boil down to don't panic about the risk five because you weren't going to get risk five in the first place. You know, we're, we're an incredibly small minority, but that we are out there, people who want a capable ARM desktop, or at least something to start building that ecosystem on that doesn't start with a lowercase I. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, uh, honestly, I think this, this is actually extremely positive news. And um, it could lead to quicker development cycles for new Raspberry Pis. I, I really think this is this is positive because now all of a sudden there's more at, at stake with ARM and, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation, who had partnered with them before they even started making the chips. That's well, a good idea if your product 100% yeah. relies on it. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> like, we should at least exchange phone numbers. Hey, everyone, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that. Uh, head over to linuxgamecast.com, smash that contact button. I got a couple of things on here, man. I'm just like basically just have a coherent sentence strung together. You can, this is our contact form. It never leaves the server. It goes directly back to us. And um, if you're working on an open source project, let us know. We'll bring in the show, talk about it, give you some free shout outs and if you're working on crowdfunding campaigns you know just basically make sure you have a linux build and uh if you're going to send spam to us make sure you use our spam email address or our built-in spam golem will nom your email up and it will never be read somebody took us up on that they wish to remain anonymous i know who it is it's a member in um, our discord they were talking about they watched the show when we were talking about dell and linux and yeah I had brought up the story about how, uh, you know, uh, Linux kind of snuck into Dell and how it got to the point now where you can just order a Linux laptop from Dell. And uh, I they listened to that and I saw the conversation uh, start out in Discord with, oh, I used to work at Dell. Let me tell you how this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we end up with this. And this is always fascinating to get a little bit of insight from the inside. Uh, they write. Um, I worked at Dell for five plus years uh, and arrived expecting being able to run Linux. Yeah, I, you would, right? You would. You're like, I'm going to work at Dell. Uh, they were launching Sputnik for customers. Dell was completely unable to offer Linux laptops for employees, even staff doing complex development work and wanting to use Docker, run VMS, uh, even staff capable of self-supporting their own Linux desktops. And I think a lot of people have been faced with that. Like, we, you can't run Linux. Like, I can make it run Linux. I don't need you guys to know how many people have hit that a lot. So uh, they asked repeatedly, and uh, a bunch of other people were like, yeah, we're doing the Linux thing. We'd like to use Linux. They said, no. And that was uh, over a period of five years. Then they left. Uh, and that yeah. time, they discovered uh, da, 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 uh, Microsoft and collaboration tools. Um, yeah. So they said they left after receiving a new Precision laptop with a Core i7 NVMe that, that took five plus minutes after logging in before I could even move the cursor. IT department had filled to the gills with every piece of Windows junk. So a cautionary tale. However, mm-hmm. I think an all too common tale. It I is. get this. Um, I think that's everybody's. Uh, if you're moving from one job to the next and you get a company laptop, pretty much know the answer is going to be no. Here's how this works. You're like, okay, you get a company laptop. Pick the one that you want. You're like, okay, okay, you get a Linux box. You go, no. Can I put Linux on the Windows machine? No. Can I get a MacBook? Yes. I'm like, all right, give me the MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had a different uh, trajectory, but that's the most common one that I've observed. You're like, I- I'll take the, it's hard, the different evil. You know, at, at least yeah. you have some semblance of like, yes, at least I can. You have a terminal. <laughs> you can set up yeah. homebrew on the Mac and uh, yeah. Yeah, like WSL. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, but most people are going to be happy with a window. But if you're doing Linux development work in Linux land, it makes sense to be able to want to run Linux. And there's a lot yeah. of situations. Dell is not unique uh-huh. with yeah, having, know. Yeah. you know, a, a, like you're working the Linux stuff. Yeah. What do you run in Windows? Really? Like, yeah. It's more common than you think. But thank you for <laughs> it, sharing that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'd. You know, I'd actually heard from employees in the past that worked at Dell saying that they had a hard time getting internal computers with Linux on them. And unfortunately, lots of businesses and industries are in the same boat because of the almighty Microsoft contracts. I had to deal with that, too, in education. 
And, you know, I, I'm just so happy that the, the person who wrote us uh, has a new job that's Linux and open source friendly. So yeah. very good. It's a good time. And, yeah. you know, a lot of times you're going to run, and especially inside, you know, the large corporate machine, like all of their analytics tracking tools, you know, the stuff to make sure you're being a productive individual. Yeah. That's all Windows based. Or they might have some Mac applications or the most common up in, you know, rewind five, maybe seven years ago would be the VPN. Mm -hmm. to get into the market but like <laughs> it doesn't officially support linux and that's changed for some parts but yeah 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 keep fighting the fight keep fighting the fight don't have any shame you know anytime i see one of my friends show up and they like that's work laptop and then it's macbook i don't give them any static i'm like yeah i get it man i get it don't worry about it mm -hmm. <laughs> all right beautiful people that's gonna do it thanks everybody for watching uh live on yeah. twitch live on facebook words uh -huh. and live on youtube we might be live everywhere else uh next week i'm, I'm going to stack this thing until it breaks because i want cool. that's welcome to how i was trained to work on stuff you know break it then dial it back um then we'll do a nice little guide and show you how to set one of these up in an afternoon and you can nice. avoid paying like 20 or 30 dollars a month for the same service and still pay five but we got people that credits? make them yeah let's do credits yeah so we've thank you uh barco burr who pledged two dollars and fifty cents a week he is now a super sweet death note in our patreon <laughs> chat thank you so much barco and he also uh, came in on our our wonderful youtube uh, stream <laughs> live which is cool and thank you to don m for resubbing for 36 months yay don m and thank you to all our, our awesome patrons, our sea monsters, our death notes, our advisors, <laughs> our chairlings. There's so many of you wonderful people and and you're in chat and interacting and watching and floating through the exosphere, so never to be seen again, sometimes <laughs> achieving terminal velocity while re-entering. Beautiful yeah. people, we'll see you next week. Have a great rest of it. Yes. Come hang out with us on Friday. Trick me. Yeah. Yeah, come, absolutely. Come race with us old people. Oh. I remember. <laughs> Crash. All right, beautiful people. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>